Welcome to RCR New Zealand. We are hosted by Camshaft Software, makers of automation, a video game for every gearhead who said, I could make a better car company. Well, this is your chance to put up or shut up. From cam profiles to fleet marketing, you do it all. And thanks to them, regular car reviews made it to New Zealand, the planet's bonus track. Sweet as. Oh, six feet twelve. Hearts and minds. This is called the Toyota Century. Some people say they know what love is, but all they know are song verses. Some cars say they know luxury, but they only know large. Toyota Century. Have you ever been in love? Do you even know what love is? Because I don't think it's possible to really comprehend the depth and dimension of feeling that goes into it until a V12 kicks in and takes you to a plane of existence where comfort is balls deep in function and giving style a dry reach around. The Toyota Century V12 is a diamond in a world of coal. Now, before I begin, I want you to do something. Yes, you have a homework assignment. I need you to Google Japanese businessman 10-minute podcast. Or you can Google Japanese businessman Will Sasso Brian Callen. Put that shit in a second tab and listen to it after you're done with this review. It's worth it. If the Toyota crown is for a regular Japanese businessman... The Toyota Century is for his CEO, a man whose kinks are an open secret, but no one says balls. He's got a driver, and even the driver says he knows nothing. Nothing. This car, for me, is now the greatest car I have ever driven, beating out the Volkswagen Phaeton for best car. The Phaeton was a former best car because it was a normal large car where everything was made of nice materials. But a Toyota Century is new best car because all the same build quality is there, but the materials are better. They're better suited materials. And the amenities are, why didn't I think of that? Genius. The upholstery. This second gen Century is Toyota's flagship luxury car. So, leather, right? Nope. Wool. Wool resists moisture. It stays warm even if it does get wet. Wool doesn't hold on to odors. It muffles farts if you do make them. And if left in the sun, wool won't burn your ass like leather will. Backseat money shot. Here it is. The rear passenger has controls for the front passenger seat. Why? So you can move the front passenger seat forward while your rear passenger seat reclines. Why? So you can fold down the front passenger seat pass-through hole and stick your feet through. Full recline. You see, since first hitting the market in 1967, the Century has been presented as the most luxurious nameplate in Toyota's lineup. Century is higher than Lexus. It holds a measure of prestige because it's a complete experience. It's not just for people making the high six figures or even seven figures. This isn't for supercar tycoons who drink diamond water after finger-banging the mistresses. No, it's for people who hustle for the long game. The Toyota Century is for the businessman who puts in the time, climbs the corporate ladder, and endeavors to have something to show for it. Though excessive, it doesn't really present itself as the vehicle for conspicuous consumption. As the advertising states, the century is acquired through persistent work, the kind that is done in a plain but formal suit. I like that. Basically, the Toyota Century is not meant to be extravagant, even though it is. The cost is roughly 11.5 million yen, which adds up to about $100,000 USD as of 2009. But Rob imported this bad boy for 16,400 New Zealand. You can do the current conversion to USD if you'd like. Not a bad deal, all things considered, and given New Zealand's policy of only allowing imports on rarer cars, this century makes perfect sense. It's the right kind of car for here in the unspoiled lands. 
Now, last week we did a Toyota Crown Athlete, but this century is a bit closer to that car's sibling, the Toyota Crown Majesta. But the Majesta does not have lace curtains. Yes, please close the lace curtains. I need privacy for my DVD selection. DVDs, yes, it's a bit dated. It's a 2006 car, whatever. There was a feature that allowed the television remote control to activate a car phone, but someone smarter than me would have to explain how to do it. Here's the engine, now you saw it. <laughs> they don't want you looking at it. And we didn't have a deep weld socket to get this engine cover off. But what it is, is the Toyota 1GZ FE. Or 1GZ FE. It's an aluminum block 5 liter V12. It's a double cam 48 valve. <laughs> 48 valves. Hey Bruce Hen, want a lot 48 valves? How much would that cost? For how heavy this car is, power is an understated 276 horsepower, or uh, 206 kilowatts. Wiki says that this number was underrated and that peak horsepower is around 300. Torque, which matters more for big cars, peaks at about 355 foot-pounds at 400 RPM, but more importantly, that peak begins at 1,200 RPM, where you're already making 300 foot-pounds of torque. But the Toyota Century weighs two tons. It doesn't do fast, it doesn't do quick. It does do smooth though, and for that you get a six-speed automatic transmission. So freaking smooth. Which makes me think, and maybe you're thinking this too, the second gen Toyota lasted until 2016, and if smoothness is the focus of the 1GZ V12, why not electric? Yeah, I know uh, the third generations of the Toyota Century are no, uh, they got rid of the V12 in favor of a hybrid V8, but the Tesla Model S started in 2012. Why didn't Toyota co op a Tesla esque all electric drivetrain? Because the 1GZ is hushed by a combination of five mufflers and elements. The engine is so quiet, the engine is electric quiet. Now, this 1GZ has had three of its mufflers removed. Rob removed three of the five mufflers so he could hear the V12. His reasoning was, look, I have an aluminum block V12. I want to listen to it. But the thing is, inside the car, it's still so muffled in here, you hardly hear anything unless you floor it. Outside is a different matter, but I'm going to save that money sound clip for the end of this video. So why not an eventual all-electric drive? Well, that wasn't redundant enough for Toyota. The 1GZ operates with two ECUs, one for each cylinder bank. If one computer fails, the engine will still operate on the other cylinder bank, operating as a 1J in line 6, from which the 1GZ is derived. Range anxiety would be another thing to consider, because the market for the Century is, and always will be, traditional. Look at the Century. This is a 2006 car, and it looks like it's from the late 80s. Driving. Very floaty. This isn't a car you corner. This isn't a car you carve. The only way that this very large car makes sense while driving is if you drive it imagining there's someone of great importance in the back seat, and then the car is fun to drive. If you try to wheel this machine, it doesn't do it. There's a lot of body roll, there's a lot of swaying, there's a lot of liquid motion as you drive. This is a chauffeur's car, make no mistake. You can put the foot to the floor and the engine will advance, but it is not going to throw you in the back of the seat. There is not going to be an immediate torque pull. Now again, that's because this is two tons, and we're not talking about DC motors here driving the wheels. This is still internal combustion. But just like how you're not supposed to look at the engine, you're not supposed to think about performance. Other comforts include three lights at each rear passenger's disposal, an air purification system, and soft pads in the rear pillars protect passengers' heads from a potential impact. You can turn off traction control, but not stability control. Also, this car came with a Walkman, but Rob doesn't have it. The previous owner took it with him, probably as a souvenir. Also on the subject of music, this is among the last JDM cars available with a tape deck. These were sold up until 2016. Again, traditional markets. They have their music they like, and it is available on cassette tape. They want to bring it with them. If this car were ever available in the U.S., it would be owned by the type of people who... The type of old money who goes to Boscov's greenery, local joke, 
and only orders coffee. It'll be a long time before these are available in the U.S. I hope they stick around, and I hope people like Rob maintain this hideously complicated V12. And now you've made it to the end. Here's your reward. Listened. Listen to a de-restricted Toyota aluminum block 5-liter V12 revving. Parked in my garage beside Toyota Crown F.